thought that your situation, your problem remains, they will not find you there. They will no longer find you there. And so the Bible says, say, Lazarus, come out! The greatest damage done to your relationship with God, my dear, beloved one in the Lord, is this old man. Irrespective of what you have done, irrespective of the mistakes, irrespective of the deliberate actions that are cruel and wicked, we have a loving and a forgiving God who forgives and never remains. Welcome to Kingdom First Half Hour. Tonight, we shall be considering the topic love love is the topic for tonight perfect love the subject matter again is love we live in a world where the word love have been perverted we live in a world where love has been distorted we live in a world where a lot of words have been spoken concerning this particular world. Our world has been so bastardized. There is a lot of traumatic experience in our world. But here is the word of God coming to us again. And God is saying that God is love. That He is love. He is the love that we desire. He is the love that the world needs in a time like this. In a time like this, what will save the world is the love of God. I am aware that a lot of people have given us different categories of love. I am aware that a lot of people have spoken about different forms of love, some say fraternal love, some say erotic love, some say all manner of things about love. But the love we are talking about tonight is the love of God, agape love. Scripture says God is love. And let us live in the love of God. Every child of God has a responsibility to operate in no other love but the love of God. Because God is love. That is his nature. And that is why the word of God in First John chapter 3 says that people conceived and brought into life by God don't make a practice of sin. How could they? God's seed is deep inside of them. God's seed, God's seed. That seed of God carries the genetics of God. And that genetics, a particular genetics it carries, is a genetic composition called love. God is love. I am aware that February 14th, with Valentine's Day. A lot of people have said so many things about St. Valentine. Of course he is a saint or he's a saint. But the way people celebrate that day is not certain. Here we have a saint who lives in the love of God, poured out his life, emptied his life, and died for the sake of love. And in the world today, we see men and women who do unimaginable things. Fornication, adultery, backbiting, stabbing, bitterness of heart as a result of the attempt to show or demonstrate love. That is not love. Love is not sex. Love is not emotion. Love is not the feeling that you have. That is not love. Love is not defined by how many women you sleep with. 
love is not defined by the words, the choice of words that you use. Love is not defined by what you say. Love is expressed in the content of character and in the, ex ex in the expression of action. A man who carries the nature of God exhibits not filial love, not fraternal love, not erotic love. He exhibits the agape love of God. The agape love of God. And that is why the word of God says, it says in 1 John chapter 3 from verse 18 to 20, it says, my dear children, let's not just talk about love. Let's practice real love. This is the only way we will know we are living truly, living in God's reality. The reality we are talking about here is the reality of God. God is love. God is love. So, if a man must show love, he must show agape love as God showed us. What does the word of God say? This is how God demonstrates his love towards us. That while we are yet sinners, he gave up his son to die for us in order to reconcile us back to himself. We do not love God. He loved us for who we are. And he gave his son to die for us. He gave his son to die for you in order to reconcile you back to himself. That is love. What is love? Of course, where we read, say, God is love. Now let us look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's hear what the word of God has have to say there. It says, If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I am nothing but a cretin of a rusty gate. If I speak God's words with power, revealing all in his mysteries, and making everything plain as day. And if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor, and even go to the stake to be burned as a matter, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So, no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without Love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Doesn't have a swell head. Doesn't force itself on others. Isn't always me first. Doesn't fly off the handle. Doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Doesn't re reveal, revile when others grow. Takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. Put up with anything. Trust God always. Always look for the best. Never looks back. But keep going to the end. Love never dies. Dear friend. Scripture says God made us, every man in his image and in his likeness. But when man fell from the Garden of Eden, that image of God was defaced. And God sent again his son Jesus. His purpose is to restore man, to restore you back to God's original intent and purpose. That originality, the pristine nature of God in man. His purpose is to ensure that that fallen state of man from the image of God to something else, to the self, the carnal man, must be destroyed and the image of God, the seed of God, must be restored back in man. 
that the love life of God will bloom in the love life of man. The mind of God is that God wants to walk on this earth, dissipating his love through man whom he has regenerated. As you hear the word of God right now, is your life, the life that you live now, has it been transformed into the image of God? Have you been transformed by the power of his word and the washing of water into the image of Christ? Scripture says the reason why the Son of God was made manifest is to destroy the works of Satan. The greatest works of Satan over your life is the old nature. The old man, what is called the Adamic nature, what is called the carnal nature, what is called the carnal man, that is the work of the devil over your life. And the works of the carnal man is obvious. The works are obvious. The reason why you see people go about in erotic love, erotic tendency, in the name of love is because they are operating in the carnal mindset. In this time of Valentine, you see people say, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And the essence of loving and giving those words is to find a way to take that sister to the, to the bed. To find a way to lure that brother to the bed. It's to find a way to deceive that married woman just to sleep with her. Is that the love of God? Is Valentine all about sex? Is Valentine celebration all about drinking your life away? Is Valentine celebration all about misbehaving? No. That is not love. That is not love. Human love is tilted towards what they can get from man. Every man that lives in the carnal nature, his love is tilted towards what he can get, what he can obtain, what he can exchange for benefit, self-benefit. And such love life is all about self. It's all about you. It's all about your interest. It's all about your goal. It's all about your vision. It's all about what you want. God didn't call you. He didn't send his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross so that you will have your way. No. He, he sent his son Jesus to die so that we will have the capacity to worship him the way he needed to be worshipped. That is why Jesus came. That is why Jesus died. And that is why the word of God in 1 John chapter 3 from verse 9 and 10 says, Any man who is in God does not continue to make a practice of seeds. For so many, even maybe for you, love is all about sin, sinning. It's all about fornication. It's all about adultery. It's all about, you better, you better mind your character. You better, you better... Behave well now, because if you don't, I'm going to seize my love for you. If you don't behave well, my love for you will die. And that is why you hear people talking about love grows. Yes, love grows, love grows. But here we are, in the love of God. He loved us. He says, love never gives up. In the mind of God. If you love the people of God, if you love a person, you must never give up on that person. You must never give up on that person. Wives, don't give up on your husband. If your love is genuine, don't give up on them. Let the love of God reign in you. Because actually, no man can truly love until a man comes into Christ Jesus. Then Christ can express his love through you to whoever he chooses to express that love to. He expresses his love through you to your spouse. He expresses his love through you to the world. He expresses his love through you to your friends, to your neighbors. 
And that was how St. Valentine lived his life. He lived his life not for what he will gain. He lived a sacrificial life. He sacrificed himself just to salvage others to God. Dear friends, whose seed you are carrying? If you are a child of God, then God is saying to that man, whatever intention you have in your heart right now, that you think that your wife is a problem in your marriage, that you think your wife is misbehaving in the marriage, that you think your marriage is failing and falling apart, God is saying to you, hold on. All you need is to turn to Jesus. All you need is to run to Jesus. Let him envelop you in his life, with his life. Let him embrace you with his power. That the seed of God be planted in your life. That you begin to love your wife again. Not because she's a perfect person, but because Jesus, God loved the world, even when the world was in sin. Scripture says, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The world wasn't seen when God loved the world. So your wife may not be the perfect person right now. But what do you do? You love her anyway. Because that is the love of God. Your husband may not be the perfect man. He goes about drinking and not caring for the wife and misbehaving. The word of God is saying, love him anyway. Jesus loved the world, loved the church, and died for the church. And scripture says, he, he, he washed the church by the water and the blood. Purifying her and sanctifying her for himself. So, it took Jesus to create for himself the kind of church he needs. It took Jesus to create for himself the kind of brethren he will be head over. And so it will take you, husband, it will take you, wife, to create for yourself the kind of wife that you want to live with. No, not by power, not by might, but by the Spirit of God. And so the Word of God is saying that in love, don't have swell head. In love, don't think that everything about love is all about satisfaction, erotic tendency. No, love is more than that. The love of God is more than that. And that is why the word of God says, Jesus was speaking to the disciples, the apostles. He said, love your enemies and pray for them that persecute you. Pray for them. Love your enemies. I like to speak to all the Christian community out there. Everyone listening to the word of God right now. God is calling you to love. Love your enemies. Love even those that hate you. Love even those that persecute you. Well, this is Nigeria. We know all the manner of evil that is going on in this nation. We have seen the wanton killings, destructions of life and property. The sacredness of life is nothing to some persons out there. The word of God showed us the love of God. It is true that you may be hurting right now. Your loved one has been killed. And there are lots of terrible things that have been meted out on your life. The word of God is saying, let love, let the love of God be established in your life. Stephen, while he was being stoned to death by his persecutors and his killers, he looked up to heaven and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He couldn't even hold it against them child of God. What kind of seed is inside your life? If it is the seed of God 
then the love of God will burst forth from within you. In the midst of the persecution, in the midst of the hatred, in the midst of the pain, you allow the love of God to prevail. It was St. Francis that said, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me show your love. What kind of nature are you carrying? It is possible that you are viewing and you are a young girl. And a lot of men have broke, broke your heart. You are suffering in agony and in pain. Because so many times you have been jilted. And you were jilted because so many times people come to promise you of marriage. And they wouldn't marry you until they want to sleep with you. And you give yourself a way to them to sleep with them. Yet they don't marry you. Hear me. Hear the word of God. Your life is not over yet. It doesn't matter how far you have gone in that iniquity. Every time a discovery of wrong is made, there is every need to make a U-turn. For U-turn is inevitable when a man discovers that he's treading the wrong path. For there is a way that seemed right to a man, but the end is death and destruction. Turn to Jesus right now. Don't feel hot anymore. Turn to Jesus and let him rest his hand over your life. Let him come into your heart. Open your heart to Jesus. So that you will, you will, you will, you will radiate the love of Jesus. You will, you will take into your life the love of Jesus. Let him be the one resident inside of you. Let that heart not persist. And in case maybe you are listening and you have a boyfriend and you have a girlfriend. And every time you meet together, all you know what to do about is to fornicate. The word of God is against fornication. God really is against fornication. I've heard a lot of people who say to me that what is this life if we don't enjoy it? What is this life if we don't derive pleasure from it? The word of God says, in the latter days, perilous time shall come. Men will be lovers of themselves. Men will be lovers of money. Lovers of pleasure. Rather than lovers of God. Do you love pleasure at the expense of God? On the day of the Nyanya bomb blast, I stood and I watched with horror how bodies of people were littered everywhere. People who just dressed well, they came out of their house or their various houses heading towards wherever they are destined to go. They dressed well, took their bait, did all the mascara you can imagine that. Dressed in their good best clothes. They never really knew that they would die that day. It was possible that some of them slept, committed fornication somewhere, or some even committed adultery. And suddenly, the blast, and they were gone. The question is, where is all that pleasure suddenly gone? How can we continue to live by the flesh? To destroy the soul. Do you realize my friend. That one day this flesh will go six feet to the ground. And rot in the ground. But it would have succeeded. In taking your soul to hell. God. Is calling us. To love. Like. He loves. Anyone who loves. Does not take advantage of love to perpetuate sin rather he takes advantage of love to show forth the grace and the message of God right now I like you to express your faith in a word that you have just heard are you preparing to drink your life to stupor in this Valentine? Are you preparing 
to fornicate in this Valentine? Are you preparing to live against God all in the name of love? God is calling you today. Hear the word of the Lord. He said, today if you hear his word, do not harden your heart. You have to make a change of heart today. Not to live in that fornication. Not to celebrate Valentine the way the world is celebrating it. Let me round up with this scripture. 1 John chapter 5 from verse 4. Every God-begotten person conquers the world's ways. The conquering power that brings the world to its knee is our faith. The person who wins out over the world's way is simply the one who believes Jesus is the Son of God. You have to conquer the world's ways because the world's way is a way of sin. But the way of God is the way of love. To love unconditionally. Bow down your heads. Let's pray. Ask for his redemptive power over your life. Ask that the reality of the cross be evident again in your life. Ask for the washing of water by the blood of Jesus. Ask Jesus to evacuate your old nature. Ask for the regeneration, the renewing power of Jesus in your life. Are you not tired of the ways of the world? Are you not tired of sleeping and sleeping here and there and fornicating here and there? So many people boast about sex that it is food for them. But for those who are in Christ Jesus, it is not like that. If you are married here, are you not tired of the misunderstanding in your marriage? Are you not tired? Talk to Jesus about it. Ask him to change your life and change your marriage. In case you are not married, talk to Jesus. Ask him to change your life and be committed to living a godly life. And Jesus will bring the right man your way. Of course, he will bring the right woman your way. He is God Almighty. He knows what you need. Go ahead and talk to him. Father, I pray for these ones. I ask that your divine power will rest upon them. Lord, I decree every work of the devil in this life, that old nature of sin, that old nature, that tendency that draws these ones into the quagmire of sin, I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. And for by the reason of the sacrifice of the cross of Calvary, I come against that work of Satan. I come against that if that carnal man. I come against that Adamic nature. Lord, I decree from this moment, let it be broken away. Let it be evacuated out of your life in the name of Jesus. I pray over your life a constant reminder of the sacrifice of Jesus on Calvary. I pray for the grace to live in the consciousness of your, of, of, of your salvation in Calvary. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I decree anyone hurting in the body as a result of sin, any affliction that has entered your body, any disease that has entered your body as a result of sin, receive the touch of God right now. Receive the touch of God right now. I rebuke that affliction. I rebuke that sickness. I rebuke that disease. In the name of Jesus, get out. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. God bless you. As we come your way next time, again, same station, remain blessed.